All right, today is an exciting day. We're actually gonna start building something. But first, here's what you missed in part two. Selecting lumber and lumber. Picking out lumber, buy lumber. Select lumber, buying lumber. All right, so I have the design and I have the lumber all milled and ready to go. So the final step is to actually start making the thing. Seems easy enough, right? It's almost too easy. So the first thing I did was to start building the main cabinet. And that's what all that six quarter white oak was for. And it was really just a matter of gluing up all the panels. I used a few dominoes along each joint just to keep everything aligned. But honestly, this lumber was so flat that it almost wasn't necessary, but it was just a little added security. So once the glue had dried, I ran everything through the drum sander to get it totally flat and all the joints perfectly flush. Having a drum sander for stuff like this is super nice. It doesn't necessarily make me faster, but it makes me way more accurate. Once all the panels were ready to go, I squared off one end on the two side panels, then cut the miters on the opposite end. Then for the long bottom panel, I cut the miters on both ends with my track saw. At this point, all my panels are slightly wider than their finished dimension. So once all the miters are cut, I then set the fence on my table saw and cut all the panels to their final width. And I like to do this last because I can cut off any clamp marks or maybe tear out from cutting those miters when making these rip cuts. At this point, I also milled and glued up the walnut top panel, which I didn't film because it was pretty much the exact same process as what I did with the oak. But I also cut the walnut plywood to size for the bottom panel, once I had wrestled the entire sheet onto my work table, of course. This footage you're about to see is probably the most accurate representation of what I do on a daily basis. So with both the top and bottom panels cut, I could then focus on the joinery, which was pretty much just a bunch of dados. 
I decided to cut dados into the oak side panels and then cut a tongue or maybe a tenon into the ends of the walnut panels that would then fit into those dados. Now, when cutting dados in a situation like this, I like to clamp the two panels back to back and then cut the dado across both of them at the same time. And what this does is it ensures that the dados will be perfectly level to each other once the cabinet is assembled. I then cut the tenons on the ends of the walnut panels, and I did this by using a rabbiting bit in my router. I made sure that my dados were cut to the same depth as the distance from the bearing to the edge of the rabbiting bit. Then just kept trimming away material until I got a really nice fit into the dados. The last step in the joinery was to trim off the front of the tenon so that the panels could slot over the stopped end of the dado and be pushed forward to exactly where I needed them. And I also did almost the exact same process for the two vertical dividers. The only kind of trick here is that when measuring the height of these panels, I always measure as close to one end as I can. If I were to take this measurement where the panel actually goes, and there was any sort of bow in either of the top panels, I'd get a really inaccurate measurement. So I measure all the way to one end where I know that measurement is gonna be dead on. So once the dividers were done, I just needed to edge band both of those as well as the bottom panel. And I have a whole video I did a while back on how I make edge banding, so you can check that out if you're interested. But the main thing is I use blue painter's tape to clamp down the edge banding and it always comes out really nice. Now the very last thing I did before gluing this whole thing up was to cut in some dominoes to hold that little spacer in place underneath that inner cabinet. So with that done, I was ready to glue everything together and I figured it would be easiest to kind of do it in sections. So I started by gluing the miters on the main cabinet. I then glued in the top and bottom walnut panels. And last, I glued in the vertical dividers, which believe it or not, I just deleted the footage for minutes ago. So let's just use our imagination. So let's just pretend that the work is going very well. So that's where I'm at now. Not much left to go, just a lot of the little details, but I feel like I've kind of turned the corner and I'm going down the home stretch. 
Building a piece for the first time is always pretty time consuming. I spend so much time staring and contemplating, but building something for the first time is definitely the most enjoyable and rewarding type of building that I do. And then within that, this part right here is probably my favorite. All of the planning and monotonous work all of a sudden starts to look like what you had in your mind at the beginning, which is so rewarding. Anyways, I'm gonna get going on all those final details and should have this bad boy wrapped up in the next week. So stay tuned for that. And of course, thank you for watching. Thanks for coming along on this multi-part series. Hopefully it's been enjoyable. And until next time, I haven't gotten to do this in a while.